holding up well. Welcome to Video Worship with St. Paul's United Methodist Church. I greet you with words of encouragement today from John Wesley. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. These words of encouragement remind people of faith to go about doing good. A few words of announcement as we begin this morning. The regular adult education class at St. Paul's is on a summer break until the fall. During that time, there will be some short-term summer small groups, both in person and by video conference. Watch announcements coming out from the church office for how you can sign up and be involved for fun, fellowship, and prayer. We thank all those who have continued to give generously and support financially the mission of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. We are processing your checks received by mail in the church office. You can also give electronically by texting 833-767-4682 or using the Give Plus mobile app on your smartphone. We thank all who are contributing generously in this way. And finally, our outreach team has announced a new initiative in providing encouragement and support to the nursing staff at Bethesda Hospital, our COVID-only hospital in the Twin Cities area. We hope that everyone in the church will have an opportunity to be involved in this ministry of outreaching, encouragement, support, and hospitality to the nursing staff. Watch announcements for how you can become involved. And now as we enter into worship, let's begin by praying together. Oh God, in mystery and silence, you are present in our lives, bringing new life out of destruction, hope out of despair, growth out of difficulty. We thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives and to attend to the gentle guidance of your spirit that we may know the joy you give your people. Amen. Our first hymn today is We Are Call. Won't you join in singing? Lane will lead us and words will appear on the screen. Thank you. 
Good morning. Today we are talking about doing good and helping support others. And this sounds like a strange connection, but I would also like to talk about geese. Living in Minnesota, I'm sure you have all seen at least one in your life. But have you ever heard someone call another person who has done something foolish a silly goose? Well, I can tell you that geese are not silly. We can learn a lot from the goose. For example, I am sure that most of you probably know that when geese fly, they fly in a V formation. Have you ever wondered why the geese fly in a V formation? It has been learned that as each goose flaps its wings, it gives a lift to the other one immediately following it. It has been determined that flying this way gives the geese about 70% more flying range. Of course, that means that the lead goose is working a lot harder than the others. When the lead goose gets tired, he falls back into the formation and another takes his place. Now that's teamwork. If you've ever seen a flock of geese flying, you have also noticed that all the time they are flying, the geese are honking. They do this to encourage one another. It is always easier to do something difficult when you know you aren't flying alone and people are encouraging you, isn't it? Sometimes a goose becomes sick or is injured and flies down to the ground. When that happens, two other geese go down and stay with it until it's well. They will join the, another formation and continue on their journey. After hearing that, do you still think these geese are silly? It sounds to me like they are pretty smart. I bet we could learn a lot from the geese. We could learn that it's important for all of us to share duties and responsibilities instead of letting the same people work until they drop. We can learn that it's important to honk encouragement to each other and support each other in whatever we are doing. We could learn that it's important for us to look after those who are sick or in need and be there for them no matter what. That's exactly what Jesus did when he was on earth and is what you will hear about in today's scriptures. Jesus went where the people were, especially people who were hurting or had problems in their life. He healed those who were sick and took care of those who needed it. And sometimes he had to break the rules to do it, but he knew that caring and helping people was more important than anything else. And that is what he wants us to do today. He wants us to use the gifts that he has given us to serve and encourage others. Our first two gospel readings today are both stories of healing. The first one comes from Luke 13 verses 10 through 17. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Here ends the first reading. The second story of healing comes from the Gospel of Mark 3, verses 1 through 6. Again, Jesus entered the synagogue, 
and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We began our worship service today with words of encouragement from John Wesley to do all the good you can. This comes from three simple rules that John Wesley gave to the Christians who he was pastoring. The first is do no harm. The second, do good. And the third, love God. Christians today still use these three simple rules in order to help live a faithful Christian life. Today, we're focusing on some gospel stories in which we see an example of Christ actively doing good. I think this is important for us to consider because sometimes as we go about living our lives, we'll move through that first general rule and do no harm, but then kind of get a little bit stuck and maybe comply with a system that we shouldn't and not move immediately into action on that sim second simple rule to actively do good. These stories of Christ remind us of the importance of doing good. And so we look at our two scriptures today. Both of these gospel stories are stories of Christ providing healing. And the stories of Christ healing in the New Testament are our, amongst our most beloved Christian scriptures. They remind us that when things are bad for us, God reaches out and touches us and brings us new life. They remind us of the way that God blesses us and the way that God repeatedly points us towards a new and abundant life and healing. And so, we look at the first story where Christ encounters the bent woman. Now, I want to talk about the way that Christ moves into action in this story. He encounters the bent woman. He sees very clearly what needs to be done. He knows she needs healing. It's very clear that she needs healing, but it's on the Sabbath. And there's religious laws against healing on the Sabbath. And so there he is. He's done no harm. He's caused her no injury or no illness. He had nothing to do with these things. He's fulfilled that first simple rule from our perspective. But instead of stopping there, Christ reaches out, touches her, and heals her. He does good even though in this case, it is against the rules of the current system. Right now, the bishops have been leading us in a lot of reflection and discussion about not being complicit. And this story, as well as the second story of healing that we're looking at today, are both times when Christ refused to comply with the current religious system so that he could do good instead. In the second story of healing that we read today, Christ encounters a man with a withered hand. This story also is on the Sabbath. And once again, rather than complying with the religious laws which forbid him to heal on the Sabbath, he reached out and healed him. He actively did good. It was clear to everyone there what needed to happen. 
healing was definitely God's will for this man. But the question was, could we move beyond the systemic things that were stopping us from healing this man? Could we move beyond and offer this man new and abundant life? Christ said yes and brought him healing. Now in these stories, the reaction to Christ's healing on the Sabbath was a mixed reaction. Some people were thrilled. They were just happy to see the healing. They knew that Christ was doing good. They knew this was the will of God for healing and abundant life for these people. They were thrilled. Others looked at Christ and said things like, there were six other days that you could have provided healing. Why now? But Christ simply said, which is better, life or death? What is the good thing to do? And it was clear that that was healing. So in both of these stories, Christ refuses to comply with the current religious laws in order to bring about good. This is inspirational for us as we consider questions of when have been times that we have been complicit, that we have complied with rules or systems or organizations which were not bringing about good. When have we complied with those and failed to do good? Our inspiration today should be that Christ actively did good. Now I want to look at a third example because I think it might be specifically relevant to where we find ourselves at this moment in history. This is John 8 verses 3 through 11. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. This is a beautiful story of Christ providing mercy and opening the door to new life for this woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Now, a couple things about this story. I said it might be particularly relevant to where we find ourselves today, and I say that because we're having many discussions in our community following the death of George Floyd about inequitable uh, enforcement of laws. And this is clearly a case of inequitable enforcement of a law. This woman was caught in the very act of adultery this being an act in which usually two people are involved, and yet only one has been brought here. And the crowd who has brought her has brought her here to determine whether or not they might at this moment stone her. So she has been accused of a capital crime, but the person with whom she was committing the crime is missing entirely. So Christ finds himself in this place. There is nothing in the story that makes us think that the woman hasn't committed this crime. In fact, Christ 
tells her to go and not to sin again. So we believe she probably did. But that is not the question. The question is, when Christ encountered someone who, to whom he could show mercy and open the door to a new life, he did it. And this is what God does for us. God shows us mercy as no other shows us mercy. And God points us down the road to a better life. This is doing good in probably its best form. And so we hold up Christ as an example of someone who actively did good, who was not complicit with the system of laws, who brought up this woman on charges which could lead her to death. Instead of death, he helped her to choose new life. So I encourage each and every one of you, as Christians and followers of Christ, to think about the opportunities that we have before us to not only do no harm, but to actively do good. When are the times that we can show mercy and point someone to a new life? Because that is what God wishes for all of us, for new life, for hope, for resurrection, starting right now, as we turn from a life of sin and turn toward a beautiful and abundant life. This is God's will for us. May we each look for opportunities to not only do no harm, but to actively do good and point others towards new life. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way of peace. Come into the brokenness of our lives and our land with your healing love. Help us to be willing to bow before you in true repentance and to bow to one another in real forgiveness. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, melt our hard hearts and consume the pride and prejudice which separate us. Fill us, O Lord, with your perfect love, which casts out our fear and binds us together in that unity which you share with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Choir, will you join us in leading the community prayer? Won't you lead us in song? peoples. In your great love you have adopted us as your very own children. Through salvation by your all-sufficient grace we are united as brothers and sisters. Help us to celebrate with each other's joys rather than to be envious or jealous. Let us walk together with joy. Pray, 
O God, for people of faith across the world. Give us the courage and strength to tear down walls of racism and prejudice that divide us and see the image of Christ in all who we meet. Help us to remember that we are all one in Christ Jesus. Let us walk together in unity. this morning for all who are ill, hospitalized, injured, or grieving. Especially we pray for those who are ill with COVID-19 and for the medical staff who attend them. When we care for one another during our times of pain, our love for each other is multiplied and our pain is divided. Let us walk together in love. today for all who live in poverty or who struggle to meet their basic needs, for those who are seeking employment, and those who toil at jobs which do not pay a living wage, for refugees starting over in a new land, and for those making a fresh start in the land of their birth. Teach us to share what we have with glad and generous hearts, trusting that together there will be enough for all with 12 baskets left over. Let us walk together with kindness. Finally, dear God, we pray for ourselves. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we might be living reflections of you. Help us to live our lives in a way that pours out your love so that others might come to know you through us. Give us the courage and strength to be leaders in our community so that your will might be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us walk together in peace. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn today is As a Fire is Meant for Burning. Won't you join me in song? Words will appear on the screen. As a fire is meant for burning with a bright and warming flame, so the church is meant for mission, giving glory 
to God's name, not to preach our creeds or customs, but to build a bridge of care. We join hands across the nation, finding neighbors everywhere. We are learners, we are teachers, we are pilgrims on the way. We are seekers, we are givers, we are vessels made of clay. By our gentle, loving actions, we would show that Christ is light. In a humble, listening spirit, we would live to God's delight. As a green bud in the springtime is a sign of life renewed, so may we be signs of oneness, mid earth's peoples many hued. As a rainbow lights the heavens, when a storm is past and gone, may our lives reflect the radiance of God's new and glorious dawn. Let us go with God's blessing. Grant, O Lord, that what has been said with our lips, we might believe in our hearts, and that what we believe in our hearts, we might practice in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.